salvation, package it in Christ. And he said, all you have to do is just believe in him, trust in him, and all that stuff will be taken care of. Hallelujah. And he said, as a result of that, there is a righteousness. There is a place of right standing with God that will come not because of what you did. It, it will come because of, it, it actually comes from God. God actually makes you righteous. He, he makes you right in right standing with him. And I, I'm not going to go in detail with that. You just listen to the message that Pastor Lam preached. He expatiates on righteousness, on, 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 um, on what that righteousness really means in, the, in those tapes. But what, what I'm trying to point out here is that there's a righteousness from God. The righteousness from God is revealed in the gospel. It's a righteousness that comes from God. It is a righteousness that is by faith first from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by. The Bible says without faith it is impossible to please him, right? You can't please God without faith. You cannot. You cannot please him without faith. Without faith. What is faith? The evidence of what? The substance of things not seen. It is the evidence of things hoped for. Substance of things not seen. Hallelujah. And the Bible says without that, you can't even please him. Faith. Faith. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The righteous will live by faith. The man of right standing with God will live by faith. By a consistent belief. By a consistent trust. By a consistent faith in God. And this righteousness is in the gospel. It is in the gospel that this righteousness is revealed. Paul is now talking about this gospel. And how this righteousness can be obtained. How this righteousness is revealed. What righteousness is. Who, it, who can obtain it. How it flows. You know, Paul begins to talk about that. But before he goes into that, from verse 18 down, Paul begins to prove. You know what righteousness means? Right standing before God. Paul had to first prove that nobody is in right standing with God to begin with. Right? Nobody is in right standing with God. So Habakkuk's claim that God had no right to allow Nebuchadnezzar to attack them because they were righteous, that claim is nullified. Because, number one, before God, no one is righteous. I mean, at that time, before Christ. Habakkuk was complaining, you know, he was complaining to God. God, why are you letting righteous people suffer? And God, through Paul, is answering that question. People are suffering, or, or the people suffered. Their suffering is not because they are righteous. Their suffering is not because they are not righteous. That's no, you have no right to say, oh, because my, my righteousness, you know, at that time, you had no right to say it. But Paul is saying, because nobody is righteous before God. So he starts... Uh, from verse, um, it starts from in chapter 2, and he began to, uh, sorry, from verse 18, he began to start, he started with the Gentiles to prove to them that they too are not guilty. They, 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 they can't claim that they're in right standing with God. In fact, let's go, let's go to, yeah, that's verse 18. He said, The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Right? Keep going. He says, since what may be known about God is plain to see by them. In other words, the Gentiles who didn't have, quote and unquote, this organized style of religion that the Jews had, they too are without excuse. They didn't retain God in their knowledge, even though they didn't have an organized way of, of worship and all. God's, God showed them, his, revealed himself to them through the things that were seen, through the natural things. So Paul argues that they too are without no excuse. Remember how when Paul went to a place and all he saw was just idols everywhere. And there was one particular place that said to an unknown God, right? Paul said, listen, you guys worshiping idols all over the place. You guys are without excuse too. You can't say you don't know God because God didn't reveal to you. He revealed it to the Jews. Those Jews claim they know God. God revealed it to Moses and revealed to Abraham. But he never revealed to us. So we, we, we have an excuse to worship whatever we want to worship. Paul said, lie. 
You are not. You have no excuse. Because God revealed himself through what? The things you can see. But when they didn't accept God, God said, okay, you don't accept me. Okay, I'll leave you to yourself. So Paul was able to prove there from verse 18 all the way down to verse, um, actually up to chapter 2, um, that the Gentiles were guilty too. He proved it. He proved that they were guilty. Then in chapter 2, he went on to the Jews and proved that the Jews were guilty. Hallelujah. I don't have the time now. We, 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 we can start from chapter 2 um, and next week. But he, I'm just going to summarize it. He proved it. He said, therefore, you have no excuse, O man, whoever you are, when you judge another, for in passing judgment upon him, you condemn yourself. Paul was saying, you who claim to be a Jew, who you are pointing finger at the Gentile. You see, you know, when you point a finger at the Gentile, three fingers are pointing right back at you. Why? Because you are saying that they are sinning and they are worshipping idols, but you yourself are doing the same thing. And Paul was gradually building a case that, listen, all have what sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Everybody sinned. Everybody is guilty because the nature of sin is in us or was in us. Hallelujah. And that was what was making everybody what? Sin. That was what made everybody guilty. Hallelujah. So the bottom line is this. Let me, let me summarize and I'll give some time for people to uh, kind of talk and contribute. Um, is number one, this righteousness that the, the just shall live by faith is something that God spoke himself to the proud. And he's saying, listen, if you want to come to me, you've got to humble yourself. You've got to humble yourself and you've got to relate with what I'm saying. You've got to consistently believe my word. There is a power in this gospel. It's not fake. It might, it might sound stupid. It might seem like it's simple. You know, Paul even said, he said the gospel to the Greek is, is foolishness. And to the Jew is a stumbling block. It might seem like you've heard it over and over again. But, but he's saying, listen, catch this thing. There's a power inside this thing. That when you catch it, it will begin to affect your life. It will begin to turn things around for your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 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 So I pray, you know, that as you study, as we continue to study the book of Romans, we will catch this good news. Hallelujah. It will become alive in our spirit. We'll begin to share it. 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 We begin to walk in it. The power that is in the gospel. Hallelujah. So we're going to continue um, from where we stop next week. Again, I'm just reiterating. We're going to go into next week. We'll talk about righteousness. As you know, delve into what righteousness really is. Follow Paul's argument about why the Jews are guilty. Why the Gentiles are guilty. And then we want to relate it to ourselves today. So I want to op- I'll throw the floor open right now. I want someone to come and just kind of tell me what they got. If there's anything you want to add to some things that I've, you know, we mentioned, we talked about now, um, this is an opportunity to come forward. And I, I'm sure perhaps I'm, I know that there, there are some things I may have not touched on that maybe the Holy Spirit is dropping in your heart right now. So you can feel free to come, grab the mic and just talk. So we have open mic session for another five minutes, five, ten minutes. So when you come, just be brief and, and just share how this relates to you, what you've heard today, how it relates to you, and how you can apply what you've heard today in your, in your regular your regular lives. So is there anyone that wants to go for it? Yeah, come and talk. Yes. Praise God. I'll, be, I'll try to be very brief. Um, what, what struck me at, with this message was something I've heard um, hundreds of times um, and it says the just shall live by his faith but what came out of the scripture to me was that God was speaking and, and you know I've heard, I've heard that term several times and I've heard it expressed several ways um, and I've, I don't know why it is etched in my mind that the his faith he was speaking of was God's faith. The just shall live by God's faith. For some reason, that's what 
I had picked up in some of the sermon. But as you were speaking, you said the gospel is the, the gospel is the um, is the power of God. You know um, that that it, it what struck me there was that is our we 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 sh, we live by our faith, our faith in God, and and every this in other words we. We own our destiny. We can we can bring on earth anything we aspire to bring on earth because it's dependent on our faith. And that just empowered me differently. It, now that partic this particular scripture reads differently to me now. And I just wanted to share that. Praise God. What I learned about what we were taught today is for me to be more compassionate about those who are not saved. Because no one can boast of his or her salvation. It is by his grace that we are saved. So we should pray more for those that are not saved yet. Because we can't do it by ourselves. And they too, they don't know. They don't know yet how to go about it. And God will reveal himself to them in Jesus' name. And the second thing I learned is that our salvation, just like Pastor said, our salvation covers every of our needs. The same grace that saves us, is the same power that saves us, is the same grace. So it's the same thing, the same power that will heal us, that will provide our needs. Somebody said, I am saved, I'm, I'm saved. I'm a born again Christian, but I've not received Jesus as my healer. That is ignorance. It is still the same power that saved, that we heal, that we provide, that we protect, that we preserve. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any more? Hallelujah. Any more? Yeah, what uh, mommy said now is powerful in the sense that. Like, like I was saying, you have to be able to relate, right? For it to really have the impact that it's supposed to have. If you don't see the need, you will not be inspired to pray for someone who needs save, who needs salvation, and you'll not be able to appropriate it in your own life as well. So the question is, how do you relate with this? How do you relate with this? How do you relate with this? All these things that we... How do you relate to the book of Romans? How do you relate with the scripture? The judge shall live by his faith. How does it affect you? You know? How does it affect your, 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 your actions? Are you going to go out? Are we going to go out and pray? Begin to pray for those that need... Are we going to go and start sharing the word? What are, what are the next... In other words, what, what are the deliverables, if I can use the business term? What are you going to do with what you have heard now? That's the question. Everything I've said is not new. You can listen to the tape. Pastor even preaches it more eloquently, more deep in depth. The question is, what are you going to do with what you're hearing right now? What are you going to do with this gospel? Okay? What are you going to do with it? Yeah, come on. Um, I guess, I think a big part of you know, what are we going to do is to just have that desire, first and foremost, to have the desire to want to learn more, to, to understand more. And once you have the desire to understand more, then you begin to study. And once you begin to study, you begin to really relate to, you know, what the gospel is really talking about. Um, I think that's the start. It's just the desire to want to know more, desire to seek him more. key is in humility when you humble yourself before you see remember Paul is talking about um, the, the theme of this book of Romans is I'm not ashamed of the gospel but out of that he brings out this word called righteousness and it's all about knowing who you are and how do you know who you are <clears throat> you've got to desire you've got to seek and, and, and delve deep into God's word because the Bible says God's word is like a mirror it tells you who you are, what you have, and the authority you have as a child of God. 
And the more you delve into it and the more you acknowledge it, the more you begin to walk in that reality of what God has done. The reality of your righteousness. That's where it's going. Of your right standing with God. Um, there are some things, some privileges and some benefits that it brings. But the reason why we're not walking in it is because we're not conscious of it. We don't know how to appropriate it. I, I, I really like what you said. We have to just desire. We have to have that desire to know more. The desire to seek more. And let me tell you, the reality of it is that sometimes you're not always going to want to study. You're not always going to want to know more. You, it's going to be sometimes frustrating. It's going to be sometimes challenging. You might have some sin or some things that might prevent you from, from just want to push, to, push it, to push forward to learn. But like we've, we've, we've been learning today, just keep pushing. Keep studying. Keep learning. Keep humbling yourself. You see, God gives grace to the humble. He gives grace or merited favor to the humble. You see, the grace you need for your life, the grace you need for your job, the grace you need for your business, the grace you need for whatever it is, is in Christ. And the more you come under that grace, the more you submit yourself to it, the more um, we see a change. Praise the Lord. Any, any other one? Any other comments, Ru? Okay, hallelujah. Can we just rise up? Oh, and let's pray. Let's pray. Just talk to God right now. Heard quite a lot. We've been hearing a lot. The, the main prayer, let's pray that this world will come alive, that we'll catch it. We we'll understand what the gospel is, really, and we we'll understand what it means to be righteous. What it means to be righteous. Oh, 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 hallelujah. Oh, 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 that the eyes of our understanding, Lord, will be enlightened. <laughs> Lord, we may not even understand it right now, but we, I'm praying that our eyes of our understanding will be enlightened. You dissolve every doubt in our hearts. You cause a transformation in our heart that we may know what it means, this word righteousness, that we may understand that the just lives by faith. Faith in you. Faith in you. Consistent belief in you. You said the just lives by faith. You said it. You said it, that everyone will live a life of faith, a life of faith that will not put our trust in our works, will not put our trust in whatever. You see, I, I sense the spirit right now. There's a, there's a, there's someone here. You, you came here with a big on your shoulders, and the spirit of God will have me tell you that you can't solve that problem yourself. You need to cast that burden on Him and let it go. You know, you, you've gone through some disappointments, uh, relational disappointments, and some professional disappointments. And uh, they disappointed you. And the Holy Spirit will have me tell you this right now. He said, cast that care, cast that worry upon me. I'm, I'm able to handle it. I'm stronger than you. I've got the power you need. Don't carry it yourself. Don't carry it yourself. I can help you. I know there's another person here. You're just overwhelmed, overwhelmed with work. Work, so much work, stuff going on in the job. You're overwhelmed. It's beginning to weigh down. God says, uh, the Holy Spirit says, I'm right by your side. How about you? How about you just leave it and allow me to carry it for you? That's what grace is all about. It says, you know, now that you are in right standing with God, you don't need to stress too much. You just, you just need to trust me. Trust me and I'll do it. Oh, how about the person that you, you started this new project and you're trying to get it done in your own strength. You've, you've, you've made all the preparations and the plans. The Bible says many are the plans of the man, but it's the Lord's purpose that stands. It's only God's purpose that stands. And God says, how about you give that project to me? How about you give it to me and let me, let me take it to where I know it, it's supposed to go? How about you allow me lead you? How about you allow me lead you and take you to where you need to be? How about you allow me take you to where you need to be? How about you put my put your hand in my hands and allow me to lead you? How about that? He, you know, God says, how about that? 
Oh, how about the person that's here that you've been doubting God? You've been believing God for some things. In fact, God prophesied. There are so many things prophesied about your life. You know, so many things prophesied about your life. And, um, you know, pastors prayed over you, anointed you, and so on and so forth. But now you're not seeing the manifestation of these things. And you're beginning to be weary. Just like Habakkuk was weary. And the Holy Spirit will have me tell you, relax, friend. Ah, though the vision tarry, it will surely come to pass. It will surely come to pass. <laughs> I'm not a man that I should lie, not a son of man that I should repent. Whatever I say comes to pass. You just have to start in agreement with me. You have to just walk with me and just trust me to do it. Oh, how about the person who has gone to several doctors and you have been trying to get this particular healing on and you, 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 you've done everything. Just like this, the woman with the issue of blood spent a lot of money on doctors and God says, I am the healer. I am the healer. Salvation covers your, your healing. He says, don't you worry. You are healed. Just receive it and walk in it. People might think you are stupid. People might think that you don't know what you're talking about. But trust me. That's what they said to Abraham. Hey, uh, Abraham went around calling himself the father of many nations. Even when there was no child in sight. He was already old and, uh, and, and gray. 90 years old. And he kept calling himself the father of many nations. He hoped against hope. And one day, one day, one day, one day. Isaac was born. Laughter. God's telling me to tell you, you are going to laugh. You are going to laugh now, laugh now, laugh now, laugh now, laugh now because the time of manifestation has come. The time of fulfillment, the time of increase has come. Hallelujah. He says, laugh now, laugh. You can laugh, you can laugh, you can laugh, you can laugh, you can laugh. Your Isaac has approached. Isaac has approached. He said, don't laugh, a laugh of mockery, laugh, a laugh of faith. Laugh a laugh of faith, ha ha ha, a laugh of faith, ha 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 ha. This thing is about faith, it's about faith, it's about faith, it's about faith, it's about faith. Oh, I worship and adore you, just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Yes. God's love has been shed abroad in our hearts. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than you. Father, we give you praise. Hallelujah. I'd like to call on Pastor Debo to please pray for us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you're opening our eyes, oh God. Thank you because the entrance of your word brings light and understanding. Lord, I pray for everyone here. Lord, I pray for everyone that has opened up their hearts to receive your word. Thank you because the engrafted word of God is able to save our souls, is able to transform us, oh God, into what you want us to be. So Lord, we thank you. We thank you because your word is working in our lives. We thank you because your word is producing fruit in our lives, fruit that remain fruit that abounds thank you because your word is producing salvation your word is producing healing your word is producing deliverance your word is producing protection your word is producing your preservation your word is producing prosperity in our lives in our spirit in our souls in our bodies in our finances oh god all round increase your word is prevailing in our lives Thank you, Father, because even as we are diligent to come under your word, thank you because you cause us to eat the best of the land. Thank you, Lord, because your word says when we hearken diligently unto your word, O oh God, we would experience your blessing. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, because we will not grow weary 
We will not grow weary in our studying of your word. We will not grow weary in our meditating on your word. We will not grow weary in our obeying your word, O oh God. But Lord, we will continue to submit ourselves under the influence of your word. And as we submit ourselves, thank you because your power will be made manifest in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, what a powerful word. I just want to encourage us that, you know, we shouldn't let it stop here. Amen. We've got to own the word of God. You've got to own, it's got to become personal. We've heard today that the just lives by his faith. You're not going to live by Pastor Omar's faith or Pastor Lan's faith or by anybody else's faith. It's going to be your own faith, your own access into the grace of God. The just man lives by his own faith. So the word has got to become our own. It's got to become our own possession, our own revelation. That's when it becomes a reality in our lives. So I just want to encourage all of us, you know, just take this word that you've heard today. Take all those messages that you've been hearing you know, play them over and over and again until it dawns upon your spirit, man. And I tell you, that time when it dawns on you, you will never remain the same again. And you begin to experience breakthroughs in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So we're just going to go ahead and give to God. We're going to give in response to what we have heard. to God the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver God is pleased when we offer of ourselves to him when we offer of our substances to him when we offer our lives to him when we bless him with what he has blessed us with he is pleased and whenever God is pleased he moves on our behalf so let's just lift up our offerings to God and let's just thank God let's thank him because he is the giver of everything that we have and out of what he has given us we give back to him so thank you father god for this opportunity once again to give into your work thank you father because of the promise that is ours that even as we give it is given back to us in good measure pressed down shaking together and running over Thank you, Lord, because the devourer is rebuked for our sake. Thank you, Lord, because we are bound in every good work. Thank you, Lord, for your grace that rests upon us. The grace to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ever ask or think. In Jesus' name, amen. So just go ahead and give cheerfully. Um, 